Okay, I'm going to make this short video to try to help out with um, experiments versus observational studies so you guys feel really good about tackling that Alex homework before Wednesday and not having to wait for me. We can go over this again in class, just reiterate whatever the main points are, but I want you to feel good over the weekend. So what were we um, going to talk about um, first thing on Tuesday morning? We were going to talk about what the difference is between an experiment and an observational study are. So experiments require a lot of planning and um, putting into place a lot of rules. So the first thing that an experiment requires is um, that there are at least two groups of participants. And we say that one of the groups is called the control group and the other group is called the experimental or the treatment group. Okay, so the two groups of participants are split up who we're researching. This could be people, places, things, right? But we split them up. Um, and the experimental group Uh, we call it receives treatment. And in parentheses, I'm going to say one variable is altered. We try desperately in an experiment to keep every other variable the same and change only one variable among the experimental group. That way we can compare at the end did the changing of that one variable impact the experimental group? And we can directly compare them to the control group, which has no treatment applied. So finally, <clears throat> the one other requirement for an experiment to be an experiment is that the groups are randomly assigned. It is required that uh, there is random assignment into the control or experimental group for something to be considered a true experiment. And then finally, why would we conduct an experiment? Um, we would conduct an experiment because this is the only way, the only way to show a cause and effect relationship. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we control every variable in the control group and we only alter one thing in the experimental group, then what we can say is that one variable affected the change in the experimental group. That's the reason why we saw the change, okay? This is very commonly used in um, medicine, right? To talk about, um, oh my God, <laughs> vaccines and, and drugs and things like that, right? We would have an experiment where in the control group, there, there are no vaccines or drugs given. And in the experimental group, there are. And we see if that drug has a positive impact, stops those people from getting sick, okay? Um, so that's what, that would be something that you would recently have heard about being experimented, would be all these vaccines that we've been hearing about. Okay, observational studies are a little bit, um, I guess, less intense, we'll say, because there's really no um, requirement for two groups. So there's no requirement um, for two groups. It's absolutely possible that an observational study does involve two groups, but it is not required in order to be an observational study. And what we do is we simply observe the subjects without impacting any variables. So what does that mean? We just sit back and we record what we see. 
we cannot change a variable in an observational study. They might naturally change over time or in someone's life, but we cannot change them in um, a particular study um, that's observational. We're not allowed to impact those participants. We just watch them and record what they've done, okay? So um, <clears throat> the only other thing that we need to mention is that um, there are two types of observational studies. Actually, sorry, one other thing before we move on to the types. Um, the first thing I want to mention here is that these cannot establish cause and effect relationships because we have not controlled, not effort, effect, sorry, relationships. Let me elaborate, right? In an experiment, we've specifically designed it to compare the changing of one variable. But in an observational study, we're watching constant changing of constant additional variables. There are so many variables in real life. So we cannot use an observational study in order to establish a cause and effect relationship about any type of change. So I do have two types of observational studies. The first is retrospective. And retrospective means that we are um, researching um, events that occurred in the past. What it means is we are looking at old data, right? So someone else collected the data a long time ago, and then it's our job as the researcher to take it and analyze it, right? Someone did all the work for us by interviewing or collecting information years ago, and we want to try to use that information to tell a story, okay? That's considered retrospective because we are not the ones who are gathering the data. It was provided by another set of researchers. In a prospective study, the researcher actively observes the um, subjects. And then um, maybe over a period of time. It's possible that you could have a prospective observational study that actually lasts years. Those are called longitudinal studies. But if the researcher is the one actively collecting that data, it's still considered prospective, even though it takes place over time. So we want to make that distinction before we move on to some examples. So on the next page, we're going to do um, we're going to decide if a couple problems, I have two more slides, I've um, screenshotted the, the problems in the packet. So we're going to decide if a couple problems are um, observational studies or experiments based on the way that they've been described, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and um, move forward to the next slide so we can look at an example of how we would uh, define this. Okay. So this is um, types of research. These are our problems from unit one, and you can see down here at the bottom that we're on page five of the packet, okay? Um, it's at the very bottom of page five. Number nine says, a researcher identified 100 community college students who were already parents and followed their progress for three years to examine their transfer and graduation rates. Was this an experiment or an observational study? If it is an observational study, is it prospective or retrospective? Okay, so only that first sentence is about what this person did. So let's focus in on that. What did the researcher do? Identified 100 community college students who were already parents and followed their progress for three years to examine transfer and graduation rates. Okay, so one of the key giveaways to me in this is that I don't see two groups. 
I don't know about you, but when you read through this example, it is not clear that these people have been divided into two groups. Okay? There's also no um, treatment or variable that is being changed. Right? There's nothing mentioned here that is changed by the researcher. This researcher simply follows the students and records their um, actions. So the researcher follows the subjects and records um, observations. So this would be considered an observational study. Now the question that we have left at the end is, is it prospective or retrospective? We still have to address that, okay? So when we think about that, we wanna make sure that we look at whether or not the researcher is the person collecting the information or is the, um, sorry if you just saw what, I, what happened on my video, I messed up with my Apple Pencil. Um, is the researcher the one collecting the data actively or did somebody else collect the data and then we came along years later to analyze it? But if you read this, it says they followed the progress for three years. That is active data collection. So this, if the researcher actually followed them, this is how I know it's perspective right there in the fact that I can tell I was followed by the researcher, not someone else did this and I came along later to try to figure out if there was any impact of that study. Okay, let's just quickly look over 10 here because we have two, we have another example on the next page. A study is conducted to investigate the relationship between owning pets and happiness. Okay, here we talk about the people. 100 subjects are randomly selected and data is obtained on whether or not they own a pet as well as a happiness score. Was this an experiment or an observational study? Okay, so I want to be careful. We do see the word random, so, but it says that the participants are randomly selected that does not mean they are randomly assigned to two groups, okay? So careful with this example here. If I'm looking at this and say randomly selected, but not randomly assigned to two groups, well then I don't see two groups here. So if I don't see two groups, then I'm still looking at an observational study. And again, this person gathered the data themselves. So this is also prospective. All right, going on to the next slide. I'm always available for questions. Please, please, if something moved too fast, watch it again or send me a Canvas message and ask me questions. All right, final question number 11. Athletes who suffered hamstring injuries were randomly assigned to one of two exercise programs. Uh-oh. Right here. Random assignment to two groups. That's the very first thing they mention. All right. Let's see if they, we talk about some sort of treatment in one of the groups. It says, those who engaged in static stretching return to sports activities a mean of 15.2 days faster than those assigned to a program of agility and trunk stabilization exercises. Whew, excuse me. Okay, so we want to um, take a look at what is the treatment here, all right? So if we're just doing trunk stabilization exercises, then I'm going to consider the treatment the um, static stretching, the stretching that occurred in one group but not the other, okay? So we have two groups randomly assigned 
and one group got the stretches. The other group does not receive the stretching. So based on this information, I can say that the stretches are my treatment. And this has been designed based on the, uh-oh, I didn't mean to zoom in. I'm, I zoomed in on my own side, so now I can't see it. Sorry, guys. Hopefully you guys were unable to see that on the video, but I'm not sure. These two reasons here show me that this is an experiment. Um, the language of response variable is um, what do we measure as a result of this experiment, right? So the question is, the groups received stretching and one group didn't, but what did we actually measure as a way of determining if it worked? If you read this little piece after the stretching, it says they returned a mean of 15.5 days faster to sports activity. So in this case, the response variable is the time to return to sports. We want to know how quickly these people return to sports after an injury. Finally, we've got two more. Who are the subjects or the experimental units? Well, think about who, who were, who, excuse me, who was randomly assigned to the groups. And if you look at that very first mentioning, that those are athletes who suffered hamstring injuries. Very specific group of people to choose from here. And then I added this because I was afraid Alex might throw in this vocabulary. It says, was this a blind study? And then in parentheses, that they, I define blind study. Did participants know which group they belong to? And the answer is, this is, is it a blind study? No. Because the participants do know which group they belong to. There's nothing in the wording that implies we hid which group was the treatment group. They do know which group they are in. A blind study or even a double blind where the participants and the researchers do not know which group is the treatment group, um, those studies are typically reserved for medical research, like um, drugs, vaccines, etc. Okay? Um, please, please use this video to help you work on the Alex homework over the long weekend. And we will just quickly go over this when I see you guys next in class. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions for me.